We are recording. We are recording. Hello, Facebook world. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to find us. Get on board. I have to see what time it is so we know we don't have a timer set. Actually, you're going to set one? There is a timer when I hit record, it's right up here. And so, recording this audio for our podcast, I know all of you have subscribed to and listened to weekly. <laughs> uh, I don't know why you would if you're watching this. It's the same thing. But mm-hmm. uh, anyway. Is that better because uh, you can see us? Yes. This. Yeah, it is better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead and leave some, leave your uh, name in the comments, or say hello, or something. Let everybody know uh, where you're, that you're here, and also if you're from somewhere else, you know, then let, let us know. know. And uh, we see Miss Janice Harper from Memphis uh, quite often, and and uh, others. So <clears throat> uh, just uh, just do that. But we're glad you're on. Be sure to like and share. We say that every week. It's not just so that more people will see us, but it really helps the message get out. And it's been amazing to me how many people uh, check us out and see what's going on. And, you know, you see three, four hundred. And and that's not only amazing, it's exciting and and makes it fun. It's good. Got a little gravelly throat. It's not COVID, as far as I know. (laughs) I don't think that's one of the symptoms. Who knows? Shouldn't joke about yeah. that, I guess, but have to do something with all the tension. Mm. Yeah. Uh, who knows? It is neat to see all the people, like all the views. I know if you... You only had to watch for three seconds to get a view on Facebook. So I'm sure not all those people watch the whole thing, but it's still neat that so many people are... That you had to click on it, though. You can't just scroll and it'll give us a view. You had to click on it. Mm-hmm. You got you to gotta, you gotta watch it for a few seconds. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. And each share opens that up to, you know, your friends, or at least the people that follow you. You can have friends that don't follow you, I guess, you know, but that way they can see it. Maybe they can get something good from it. Mm-hmm. Especially with what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, tonight uh, and last week, tonight and next week, I think every Christian uh, has a struggle with uh, with, and and it's something that we all can benefit from thinking about. There's definitely so. something there to to find each week. <clears throat> right, how we doing? We're we a good three minutes or so, so we'll just go ahead and and get started. And we, I guess we've kind of informally welcomed everybody. Um, so now, yeah, so now we'll go ahead and. And formally welcome everybody. So thanks for tuning in. Glad you made it here. Um, you may see uh, in the top right. I hope it's not in the way. Uh, I think it's in the top right or top left that that this is a, a premiere. Um, so that means well, it means a couple things. One important thing that it means is you can come back and watch this anytime. You can share it, and um, it, it'll be on it'll be on Facebook for for other people uh, to see anytime. And just like John said earlier, if you missed it. Um, it, it's exciting to see the people that, that tune in, people that um, you know have been part of this church for a long time, people who have been associated with this church for a long time, people from the community, and then people from all over the United States, maybe even all over the world, I don't know. Maybe somebody from another country is, is uh, tuning in. But we appreciate it on a personal level, but also the whole purpose is so that uh, we can bless people with the good news of Jesus and uh, some scripture that may help you through uh, you know whatever it is that you're going through right now. I know uh, these are these are interesting times. Is about the most positive way um, to put it, I guess. You know it is very interesting. It's it's a uh, it's like those things that you're you're going to tell your grandkids about. So our great grandkids or or whoever. At least that's the way I look at it. So, um, but again, welcome. Comment, like, share. Um, try to bless other people with. Uh, I think tonight's going to be great, by the way. Oh, well, good. Yeah, we're talking about attitudes. And this, the attitudes that we have are the underlying thoughts and uh, the way we regard things. And those things drive how we act. And so they're sort of a bedrock of our personality. And sometimes I was thinking 
uh, about attitudes. And I think I can remember my mom when I was a teenager saying, watch your attitude. Mm-hmm. And it's because even though I can't see my attitude, I can see the, the, the outgrowth of it. I can see how it affects what I do. And, and our attitudes are controllable. I don't think that they're some uncontrollable, well, that's just the way I feel. Our feelings come and go, but our attitudes are something we can say, here's the way I'm going to view that. Here's how I'm going to think about that. And so that becomes sort of a bedrock of our behavior. And so we talk about having wellness checks. Um, Zig Ziglar used to say, we need to get a a checkup from the neck up to get rid of our (laughs) stinking thinking. So I don't know why that sticks in my mind, but it does. But we do. We need a a checkup from the neck up. You know, we, we have to think about how we think about things. And there are a lot of scriptures about our attitudes. And we've been talking about, we talked about some last week. We talked about how to have peace. We talked about boldness. We talked about generosity and commitment and those are those are sort of the 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 items from which we operate in our life an attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior and so when we think about attitudes we want to talk about four more attitudes tonight and we'll just spend a few minutes with each one we're going to note some scriptures that go with each one, so you might want to get a pencil and paper and have your Bible handy. <clears throat> we are going to make these available, and we'll make a note of that in our Facebook family uh, Facebook page as well. So, but uh, but you might want to be ready to make some notes of that. All right, so we're talking about four uh, attitudes tonight, and the first one is stillness. Stillness. In our crazy, nonstop world, do we dare talk about being still? It's really, really hard to do. We're infatuated with busyness. I mean, we really are as a, as a society, as a culture. Yeah. We like to be busy. We like to be busy. We, and we sort of feel like there's a, a little shade thrown on somebody if, if they're not really busy, you know? <laughs> what did you do today? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <What>? Yeah. <laughs> Or I took a nap today. You took a nap? Are you crazy? What are you doing? Uh, and not only are we so, uh, we exalt busyness, we also exalt multitasking. And so sometimes we'll have something we're listening to and then something we're writing on and maybe something that we're watching. And the truth is nobody is a good multitasker. We, <laughs> we, we downplay or don't pay attention to something else. One of those things is prayer and scripture reading and spending time with God. Uh, I'm, I do this, and I'll just admit, sometimes I've got uh, my Bible app playing on my phone, and so I'm listening to the scripture, but I also might be looking at something else, and I also might be tidying up the room, or, you know, but it's like it's really, really hard to just sit down and be still. And we that passage, I know, has already come to everybody's mind, Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. And I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. And, and this, this whole idea of, of being able to be in the presence of God. Uh, one reason why we don't hear from God like we should is because we don't give him much time to speak. We, we give him our list of stuff we want, say, in Jesus' name, amen, and we move on. Um, but somewhere along the line, we need to develop this attitude of stillness, which might not always be just sitting down and being quiet. It might be a spirit of stillness, mm-hmm. you know, of, of not being always driven to do more and more and more. And it's one of the most incredible stories in the uh, Old Testament, and one that is, is kind of a backdrop of a lot of passages. The Exodus from Egypt Uh, is a backdrop of several stories in the Bible and and mentioned over and over again. And we know this, we're so familiar with it. Uh, But, you know, they come out of Egypt and what's what's, uh, is sort of stunning, they've seen 10 plagues. They have to be so convinced of the power and majesty and presence of God. But they come to uh, this river, this sea that they can't get across, the Red Sea. And 
and they start to suddenly say, oh, we can't do it. It's not going to matter. You know, God's, why did you bring us out here to die? And, and Moses stands up, you remember, and says, don't be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. And the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. And then he says, the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. All you have to do is be still. You don't have to do the fighting. And it's an amazing story. And then God says to Moses, go stretch that rod over the sea. And they walk across on dry land. And we know how that goes. And we can talk badly about the Israelites, but I'm too much like them exactly. uh, to, to make fun of them. So, uh, But this idea that the Lord will fight for you, you only have to be still. You only have to trust him. You don't have to be in that relationship with him where you know that he's got this. And so every day we hear the news about coronavirus. Every day it's worse. Every day it's growing. Uh, we hear of friends and loved ones who are impacted by this in their health. Uh, we have medical health care professionals in our church that tell us that uh, they're seeing a lot of this, of, of COVID-19. Uh, we can panic a little bit about that. But we do need to do things that, to take good care and follow the guidelines that are given to us. But ultimately, uh, if that puts us in a panic, we need to rethink our attitude about facing life's troubles because this is just one of the many troubles we face in life. And whatever those troubles are, we need to be still before the Lord. Psalm 23 talks about in the first few verses, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. That's where I want to be in my life. That's where I want to be inside in my heart, you know, that whenever we face a struggle, I want to be by those still waters and know that God has got this. And so many stories in the Bible, in Mark chapter 4, the story of the, the apostles you know, they're crossing the sea and and a uh, great windstorm comes. And there's winds breaking into the boat uh, and Jesus is asleep. I think that's the funniest story. It's such an odd thing. Why is Jesus asleep? I mean, even knowing he's the son of God and he's got this, I still don't know why he's asleep. That's a terrifying moment. But uh, they awake him and say, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You know, and somebody said, well, we'll write a song, you know, about that. We used to sing that. Uh, And he awoke, he rebuked the winds and said to the sea, peace and be still. And the wind ceased and it was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear. Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. And there is a song that one of the lines is the wind and waves still know his name. So whatever wind and waves you're facing in your life, whether it's just fear and, and dread and, and uh, over this COVID-19 and, and all the ways it's changed our life, or, or maybe you're, you have another illness, or maybe you have some family problems or, or medical problems, I, I don't know what kind of problems you're facing, but whatever they are, the wind and waves, they still know the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, Uh, peace be still and learning to be still that's a lifetime practice I think so that's one of the attitudes I think that will help us is to learn the attitude of stillness yeah the Lord's gonna fight for you all you have to do is be still I I I like that Um, yeah I like that a lot also what I noticed you said about multitasking you know the University of Stanford did a a study on multitasking and found that it's actually counterproductive. You get less done when you multitask than you do if you it. just devote yourself to uh, to one thing I at a time. It. Also, real quick, I, I wanted to talk about a show that you and I uh, watch sometimes called Alone, and where these people are out in the middle of nowhere by themselves, and you know they're survivalist experts. And one thing I've noticed about that show is. You know, if you're out there by yourself, you're spending time with only yourself. I mean, you have time to be still and to and to really kind of meet yourself in a, in a new way. And I think that's scary uh, in some ways. Uh, Randy Harris actually went with some monks one time for 40 days of silence. And he said it was one of the most terrifying things that he's ever <laughs> I it. done. Um, I and so maybe it. that's why we're so busy sometimes. So we should seek to, 
to have an attitude of stillness. We should mm-hmm. seek to be still, mm-hmm. make that a discipline. And so that's one of those kind of countercultural things uh, that we think, you know, that can't be right, you know, where we should, not, we should do nothing for a little while. That doesn't sound normal. That doesn't sound um, right. And that kind of leads into our next attitude, attitude of, of leadership. And I think there's a couple ways to, uh, to look at this. The first way I want to look at it, though, is as far as the Great Commission. Last, last week we talked about commitment as uh, one of the attitudes. And in Matthew 28 we have what's called the Great Commission. It says, go and make disciples baptizing and teaching them. You know, you, we want, as Christians we're supposed to kind of continue the message. Let the message of the gospel live through us and let it plant seeds in other people's heart and so we're charged with leading other people uh, to know Jesus and he says I'm with you always until the very end um, of the age and so what does it take to be a good leader or a good maybe teacher um, and I think it's another one of those countercultural things to be a great leader the Bible tells us you have to be really humble you have to have an inordinate amount of Humility. James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He's going to exalt you. So to raise yourself to leadership, you have to humble yourself. John 3.30 says, He must increase, but I must decrease. And so as Christians, you know, we are, I mean, you know, we've committed our, our, our life to Jesus, and we've committed ourselves to continue um, that work. And uh, James says it pretty, <laughs> pretty plainly. He says, Not many of you should be teachers. You know, my brothers, for you know that he who teach will be judged with greater strictness. And I think that's something that we accept as, as Christians is we know that we're going we're gonna to see God one day and we're going we're gonna to have an account of, of our lives. And I think in order to do that, it's better for us to say, you know, I, I did my best to lead others to Christ. I think leadership is a, a great thing. Matthew 20, verse 26 says, It shall not be so among you. Whoever will be great among you must be... Um, your servant, and so again, we see this kind of countercultural ideas. I think that's the the number one uh, quality of a good leader is humility, and we see this again. And this is the the last one. It's kind of a long one, but it's in Philippians chapter two, verses one through nine. So listen close. If there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love being in full accord and of one mind. It sounds like it has a lot to do with attitudes there. Yes. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves, and let each of you look not only to his own interests, but to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So there we go with the, you should have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. Verse 6 in, in Philippians 2 says, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient, obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And here's the leadership part of it. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. And so as we um, seek to follow Christ and to improve our own attitudes, uh, there's no better place to look uh, than Jesus. And now we see that that standard was set because he lowered himself to the point of death, death on a cross, and then he was raised up and lifted up so that his name is greater than any name um, that ever existed. And so as we seek to have that same mind, I think, you know, um, we could be great leaders because we, we try to be like Jesus and we, uh, we, we try to imitate his humility, not, his, not necessarily his leadership, but his humility. So, and that will lead to being um, a good leader. So. Uh, great thoughts. You know, leadership in the kingdom is different than leadership in the world. Leadership in the world is about clawing your way to the top, no matter who you have to step on to get there, and doing what you have to have to do to stay there. And sometimes that's the way people think of leaders. You know, they're just the ones who overpowered themselves into uh, that place. And there's the bosses, kingdom, and then there's leaders. There's a yeah, the difference there. Yeah, and and leaders in the kingdom are based uh, it's based on humility and service mm-hmm. and loving others and following in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus is the greatest leader that there ever was. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, and so to follow in his steps means that we're not, uh, you know, it's not a dog-eat-dog world right. in the kingdom. And so that's really important. And it really does lead into the next attitude, which is having an attitude of being a servant or the attitude of service. Uh, there are a lot of scriptures about serving others and, and loving others. And we've read some, that passage in Philippians about putting the needs of others above your own and, and being someone who cares about you know, what's going on in other people's lives. Hebrews 6 and verse 10 says, God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. And so God notices servanthood. He notices people who serve. This is a part of what he implants within us as we become Christians. And we embrace the name and the life of Jesus and the ways of Jesus. We become servants. We become people who don't have to have our own way about everything that there is. And, and I tell you, I don't see that spirit in the world. What I see in the world is uh, everybody claiming their rights, everybody having to have their own way, everybody correcting other people and judging other people. In Christianity, our job is to serve. In Galatians 5 and verse 13, it says, For you are called to freedom, brothers, <clears throat> only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And I love this idea in, in Galatians, this idea of freedom and the freedom we have in Christ. So oftentimes Christianity is viewed as, here's a long list of rules, and you just do those rules, keep those rules, and everything will be okay. And, and Paul says, you know, we're, we're called into freedom in Christ. We're not living a rules-based, law-based religion like the, uh, the Jews did in the Old Testament. We're brought into a new covenant that's not based on law-keeping. Uh, we know that law-keeping makes sinners of every one of that's us. That's right. Grace gives us all freedom. Not freedom to live how you want in the sense of without attempting to follow Christ, but there is freedom there. And you know, in that freedom... Uh, there might be some things that I could do and, and God would be pleased and wouldn't condemn me for, but that would be hard for you and upsetting to you. Maybe, and I don't have an example uh, in my mind, but, you know, Paul talks about Romans 15, about eating meat and observing special mm -hmm. days. You know, I have met Christians who say, well, you shouldn't observe Christmas. But I like to observe Christmas, and I like to include Jesus in Christmas, I don't like to keep Jesus as something uh, else, you know. And so, um, so as a servant, what am I going to do? How am I going to, how am I going to, am I going to just boss my way through that? Or am I going to try to serve somebody else? I can deny myself sometimes uh, and out of love for other, other people. And so um, freedom's not an opportunity for the flesh, it's, but through love we serve one another. And it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard. In Matthew 23, 11, Jesus, again, uh, mm -hmm. we, we mentioned earlier, said, The greatest among you shall be your servant. And Jesus said about himself, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10 and verse 45. This is going to play out in a thousand ways. It's kind of why it's hard to center in on one specific way. But I think when I think we apply this to ourselves personally. I don't think we point out to other people and say, hey, you're not a good enough servant. You're not serving me. You know, I think we look in ourselves and our own attitude and say, am I taking a servant spirit toward someone else who may be struggling or hurting or uh, maybe having a difficult time? Uh, and, and so there's there probably, well, I just, we could spend a lot okay. of time with this, but just having that spirit of being a servant, of seeing what other people need and rushing to, to help them. I think that's a great uh, attitude. It's a very Christian attitude. Yeah, I know sometimes I'm guilty of thinking, you know, when somebody asks me to do something, I think, you know, what's in it for me? And that's probably not the best. Actually, that's, that's the wrong attitude to have. Let me say that uh, correctly. That's the wrong attitude to have, you know, to be self-seeking um, because that's the opposite of, of, of service. And I think uh, there's a lot of ways in our lives, you know, in our church. Uh, when I say our church, I don't mean just this church, but... Whoever's watching out there, you know, in your church, there are ways that you can serve 
um, your church instead of being self-seeking when you go to church? You know, am I going to, is it going to be the way that I want it to? Is it going to look like I want it to look? And I think we can, I think we need to be careful sometimes. I need to be careful sometimes. I'm talking about myself um, and see ways that I can serve other people through um, the the power that is the group of people that, that make up uh, the church. I think the church is capable of just wonderful, great things and to bless so many people. And um, so I love that. I love the idea of, of, of service and humbling ourselves um, to do that. But of course, it requires us to be diligent. Um, I think that that's our next attitude is an attitude of, of diligence. Uh, last week, we talked about commitment and so this is kind of along the same lines you know trying to see things through to uh to do what we can uh for the kingdom of god second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says do your best to prevent yourself to god present yourself to god as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed and we learned just a minute ago that there's no shame in saying i need to be still for a while so it doesn't mean saying busy all the time um, but it says, who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And so the key to all, all these attitudes is found in Scripture, and that's what we're basing um, these attitudes on is what we see in, in the Bible. And so we rightly handle the word of truth and let that sink into our hearts, build a, these good attitudes um, so that we can um, you know, be a great ambassador for, for Jesus. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore... My beloved brothers, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So here's this idea of, of diligence. And when it says immovable, I don't think that means immovable in our own opinions. It <laughs> means immovable in our faith. And we know that um, you know there is absolute truth in who Jesus was. He is who he said he was. And so um, our labor is not in vain when we, when we work uh, for the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 says, Brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and your election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And I'm going to end with this verse, Colossians 3.23, famous verse on diligence right here. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And I think that's a great way to go about any job that you have, whatever it is. You know, you're, you're a, a represent, representation of, of who Jesus was and we are supposed to have the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus and we do it in our jobs and in everything um, that we do. So we'll close out with the prayer but anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I did want to say sometimes especially in church work and when we have certain duties or certain projects we take on uh, it can it can wear on us because mm -hmm. we don't have all the help we need or, we, or it interferes with our life in some way or we're you know, we start to think, well, maybe I'd rather do something else or, or you know, we kind of can can get tired of doing some things. And maybe there's space for that to say, yeah, I've done all I can do here. But there's also space for diligence and say, you know, this is a worthwhile work. Yeah. It's not always easy. It's not always exciting. Sometimes people don't even notice. But I want to keep doing what I'm doing for God. And I want to do it well. And it's that spirit of diligence that we hope uh, we have at our workplace. Our bosses hope that we have that spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our homes, we diligently serve and love our spouses and our children. And, and that, you know, we, uh, we, we all get tired. We all want to, uh, and we all need rest. But, I mean, mm -hmm. we all sometimes think, do I want to do something else uh, or and and we just need to be diligent and keep on doing the good things that we're doing. I think that's uh, that's part of the motivation for for choosing a topic like attitudes is is for the past you know since the beginning of March for the past few months like the core of of our culture and our society and who we are as people has just been completely shaken. And I think you know with with all the conditions surrounding us, it's been easy to say you know I'm tired of this or I don't want to do this anymore and. You know, at least for me, you know, my, my patience and my and my tolerance has been stretched and pushed, and so that was the motivation for this whole this whole topic. And in, in, in my eyes, is you know, I need an attitude check. I need to I need to check in on on, on my attitude and why I act the way that I do and why I make the decisions um, that I make. So, yeah. if you don't have anything else, I'll go ahead and close us um, in a prayer. Thank you for tuning in again. If you if you're late getting here, that's fine. It's going to be online. Um, indefinitely and feel free to like and share maybe some some of your friends can be blessed by this
So let's pray together. Dear God, I thank you so much for everything that you give us. Thank you for the lives that you give us and the opportunities that you that you lay before us. And Lord, please help us to be able to discern uh, those opportunities. Please give us the wisdom to know uh, when we need to be be still and we, when we need to be be diligent. Please help us know when we need to lead and when we need to serve. And please help us to uh, to know when to do both of those at the same time. Um, Lord, we love you. We want to be like Jesus. We want to have the same attitude and the same mind as Jesus so that one day you, you will exalt us. We love you. We want to glorify you. We want to honor you. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Great job. Thanks.